Okay, here we go. Welcome to another episode of Design Technology IB uh, from the Invention Center. Um, so this last part is the this is the end of the topic one, human factors, and it's about physiological factors. Okay, so to remind you, we've gone through anthropometrics, which is specific to measurements. We've gone through psychological factors, which is specific to mental behaviors. And now we're on to uh, physiological factors. So it's about physical aspects related to comfort, perception, and the environment. So um, remember, multidisciplinary, the ergonomics is about that connection between objects and humans. All right. So first part related to physiological aspects is about comfort and fatigue. This is really important when we refer to comfort, we refer to ease. So how easy is something to do? Fatigue is about the physical or psychological tiredness, all right? So comfort, ease, fatigue, tiredness. So if we looked at some of these, you think of how easy it is to peel the cucumber with that, um, comfort-wise, with that peeler, how easy it is to interact, how comfortable it is to interact. And then talking about physical tiredness, is that chair, does that, does that affect you if you're watching, um, if you're sitting in front of the screen too much, how that affects fatigue of your eyes, fatigue of the body, things like this, okay? So that's the big thing is this comfort and fatigue, okay? So specifically, physiological factors relates to body tolerances. So that is how much can the body withstand? right? So it's mainly about comfort and fatigue related to those physiological factors. So fatigue, people get tired, they react differently. Remember that garbage truck? I think there's another slide that talks about it briefly. Um, so that garbage truck, how the driver was tired and how that affected him, how he interacted and how he did things. So that fatigue, comfort, it's different between people, right? A lot of this data is not always um, Objective, most of the time it's actually very subjective because we don't know. Huh? On a scale of 1 to 5, how painful is something? On a scale of 1 to 10, how comfortable is something, right? It's, it's quite qualitative, the data. Um, so it's also important to consider because it relates to safety, health, comfort, and performance, especially in work-related situations, learning situations, so remember that. So... Controls of machines may be in the correct space, but fatigue can really affect it because it's just repeated over and over and over. Posture, position, all those things we'll talk about in biomechanics, but it's important because that can affect how people use things in that comfort or fatigue aspect, okay? So how it's collected, similar to psychological factors where there's performance testing, user trials, observations, surveys, um, more surveys, but they can also look at those risk assessments or accident investigations. So there's that, there's that um, garbage truck again. So you look at a particular accident and how can it be improved upon, so like a case study. And then based on those, you can make decisions about what you should be doing with your design. All right. So just another brief look at this one again. Similar types of data collection. It could be primary, it could be secondary, it could be qualitative, it could be quantitative, okay? So it's all collected and then those informed decisions. Yep, comfort and fatigue, how that data is collected, surveys, observations, accident reports. Then that allows you to design different ways. So this is an uncomfortable seat. Now, because of all that data that was collected, you're able to create this nice new fancy car seat, all right? Comfortable, lasts you a long time in the car rides, adjustable, so things like that are important to consider. So same thing, again, remember things can be a certain reach, but if it's just repeated or if it's gone for a long time or you're in there for a long time, the seat can be uncomfortable. So even though the Simpsons aren't uncomfortable, look, Homer's a bit tired, he's a bit fatigued, so Bart's got the donut, but this also probably makes him a little bit tired as well, too. Are we there yet? Oops. <laughs> there we go. Are we there yet? No. 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 Are we there yet? 
So just maybe something silly to help to help you out uh, to remember. But though that type of distance can really make a difference, not only uh, physically too, right? So changing a seat like this to something that's more uh, F1 form drivers, right? How that's more comfortable to last for those long times. Okay. So this reminds me back to the to the form. What you've got a couple of questions here. Remember, these are about these factors, um, about the collection process. But then here's a question: Explain worth two points. Explain how data related to comfort and fatigue informs design decisions. So find an example. Um, this one is a car seat. It may be comfortable, but it causes discomfort over a long period of time. Okay. So try to think of that fatigue. Give an answer, and then that description. Okay. So that's the one question you need to answer related to body tolerances, fatigue, and comfort. Moving on to biomechanics. That's another question, actually. We'll put that in there. What's the definition of biomechanics? So it really is about that research, analysis, and mechanics of living organisms. So it doesn't have to be humans. It could be another type of animal. It's something that's living. Using this anthropometric data, researching, you see it a lot in sports sciences where they're collecting all this information, serve, right, how people's feet land, um, about force, about duration, about posture, about repetition. It was just happening over and over. So it's that science. We don't get into a lot of the details of it, but just remember it's there, okay? A couple of considerations that are important to biomechanics are strength, age, user interface, and torque. So if we've got somebody who wants to open a jar and it's a middle-aged woman, they open it very differently than a middle-aged man or even a child because all of these, whoops, all of these things are different. Okay, so also to help, you don't need to know this, the mathematics or the physics behind it, but torque is how much force is acting on an object that causes it to rotate. Okay, so... Um, and it can always be changed. Elderly people, younger people, disabilities, um, uh, mental problems, Parkinson's, fine motor skills, all these things can change. And their motor outputs are different. So similar to that human information processing system, things can change. Okay? So based on that, I want you to find an example. And then how has that been modified with children in mind? How can that enhance their use? Or how can it maybe prevent a use in some way? So one example is a doorknob. Um, so the doorknob and is related to torque and related to muscle strength. So I've seen this in my son. Whenever he tries to twist open the door, he can't do it because he doesn't have the he doesn't have that torque ability, nor does he have the muscle strength to actually hold on to the door and twist a doorknob that's like that. He can do it with flat ones, but these round ones, he has a challenge. So that has caused him. Here's this question. The circular doorknob allows children, um, uh, cannot allow for children to use it because of their low muscle strength and inability to use torque. Okay, so that's an example. Product, door handle, biomechanics, torque, muscle strength, reason, and that's why. So that's what I want you, that's second to last question. Um, you can have a flip through too. Obviously, I, I suggest trying to find your own good examples, okay? Um, and the last one, is I want you to create your own question, an IB question, all right? So using the command term describe, try to create a question that's worth two points. So anything related to physiological factors, have a look. So how does data relate to coming from to inform design decisions about the product below? And there's a question. You don't need to answer this one. I want you to create a question, okay? So that's the last, last thing in the forms. Um, make sure you don't forget to complete that. Um, and hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you soon.